think I switched from the iPhone 10 to the Pixel 2 XL. It's confusing. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech, tech so honest that you're... Tech so honest it hurts. New t-shirts. Link in the description. So, I've been using the iPhone 10 as my day-to-day -day phone ever since sometime early in this year. About three, probably for about three months and then a couple of months when the phone first came out. So, it has been the phone that I've used the most uh, since late last year. A few weeks ago, though, Verizon was offering a deal for the Pixel 2 at like $22 a month and you get a free Google Home Mini and... Uh, Chromecast, which I don't need, but I wanted to have an Android flagship phone to compare against the 2018 phones that were coming out. I wanted to have both. So I went ahead and grabbed the Pixel at a price point that was actually seemed like it was worth as opposed to what they're still asking for it at full retail price. So I got the Penguin style white model and uh, I've been using it as my day to day phone. I made it to the return window and found that I couldn't bring myself to take it back. So that was the first sign something was going on. I also got on the same day a Google Home Max and I already had a mini. So I was able to connect those together and get some music going throughout the house. Then I got that other mini. So it's just going to keep getting better. If I get three or four more minis, then I can have whole house audio and still get something that is really good to listen to, like the Home Max. Now, it might not be as good as Sonos, but just to have music around the house, more than decent. And the Home Max does sound pretty great. If you want me to do a review, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and, you know, if the answer is yes, then I probably will. <laughs> so then a week or so after I got the phone, Google iOS happened and they released the Android P beta. I downloaded it and I have to say that the new interface is probably the best version of Android that I've tried to this point. I like the gesture interface. I like the more rounded design and the changes that they made to the notification panel. So you can hide notifications right from the panel or turn notifications off right from the panel instead of having to dig in to the app or something like that. It's made the, it's made the phone a lot more user-friendly, and yes, maybe even a lot more like the iPhone 10. But even in the beta stage, this version of Android is pretty solid. I've had really no major issues, a few freezes here and there, but nothing major. So I used the Pixel 2 XL for three weeks. Yesterday, I decided to put my SIM card back in the iPhone 10. First off, I immediately noticed how much better the iPhone 10 screen is. It's night and day compared to the Pixel. Uh, the Pixel looks dull and really kind of colorless compared to the iPhone 10. Even with boosted mode on, uh, you can't get the Pixel to have anywhere near the pop of the iPhone 10 screen. The iPhone is definitely a better built phone, but I have to say that the white color here on the Pixel does look really good. I also picked up a Google Live case and I found that this is a pretty nice case. In some lights, it looks a little pinkish, but it's a really kind of cool design. I really prefer to use the Pixel naked. It, it just, it feels good in the hand, if you know what I'm saying. And I don't have nearly the kind of like anxiety about dropping it as I would with any of the all glass phones. This thing I would love to carry naked. It's just such a beautiful piece of design. However, um, I'm scared. I don't want it I don't want it to be messed up. So I have a product red leather iPhone skin case thing. A couple hours after I had this the sim back in the iPhone, I started to notice a few other things. And these things were th things that bothered me that hadn't really bothered me all that much before. For one thing, when I got the Pixel, I had started to use uh, the Google Assistant more. You got the squeezy feature here and it just pops up and you can ask it to do things. Stop listening to me. 
and it's just a lot easier to access than I found on other phones. I rarely, if ever, use Siri, but now with the Google Home Max and Minis, as well as Google Assistant here on the phone, I'm finding myself really starting to integrate the, the voice assistant stuff into my day-to-day -day life. And to be honest, Apple can't really um, compete with Google Assistant at all. Uh, Siri, it's sort, sort of like Siri is elementary school level. It has elementary school level abilities and Google Assistant is just finishing high school and about to go on to college with the new stuff that we're going to get from it. Siri is the oldest voice assistant and yet for some reason it is by far still the stupidest. It's not improved at all for years. And I'm going to say this, Apple better pull a rabbit out of its magic hat and get Siri up to snuff. The connected home voice integration thing is really beginning to come into its own. It's going to be a thing that's going to be here to stay. So I think Apple has really got to get their game going and they're way behind at this point. I mean, the HomePod Siri is stupider than the regular Siri. So Apple's really running the risk of being left behind. And if they're left behind on that, I don't know if they'll survive if they can't compete with the next wave of, of innovation, which, you know, when once you see Google Duplex, once you see what Android is capable of doing, Apple should be shitting their pants. After three weeks with the Pixel 2 XL, I started to understand why people got so annoyed at the iOS notifications. The number of notifications I got and how often the screen just lights up every time a notification came in was really annoying after three weeks of not having it. The big problem for me is the YouTube Creator Studio app. I like to get notifications from that app because it lets me know when people have commented on the videos and I can sort of keep track of what's going on. As you see here, this is just a solid wall of YouTube notifications. And if I wanted to find, where's, it's just, just, why? Why? Look at that. It's all YouTube notifications. Oh, now we find some, some other stuff down here from 9.17 a.m. It's just not, it's just not good enough. They have to do better than that. And I didn't realize how, how much better Android was until this most recent back and forth with the Pixel 2 XL and the new version of Android, Android P. Eventually with iOS, I'll end up just turning off uh, notifications for the app, for the Creator Studio app. But with, with the Pixel 2 XL, uh, they're all sort of nested together and it really makes sense. Of course, notifications isn't like a make or break feature on a smartphone, but I still found myself putting the SIM back into my Pixel this morning. The first time I found that the combination of like widgets and uh, and apps and folders and all that kind of stuff really has made a huge difference in how quickly I can get stuff done. I mean, I can go straight to my calendar. It's right here. I use Google Docs for all my scripts, but I keep it. I keep that nested into a folder with other Google stuff and the icons in the folders are just bigger. So it's easier to see from my old person eyes. These are things that did not occur to me. I find that I'm actually getting more prepared for my day because with the calendar just right there to scroll through, I know what's going on, what appointments I might have and how, when I need to be someplace, whereas it's always opening the app in iOS. So it's been Im immensely more convenient than any way I, I've been able to access the calendar when I'm on the Apple side. I've finally given up on the iOS widget page. I just can't get behind that scrolling anymore that is necessary on the iPhone 10 widget screen, I never actually find myself using it because I have to dig so deep into the screen to get there. I like having the widgets kind of spread throughout Android. You know, like here I got some Hue widgets and then over here I've got my Audible, I've got my Google Play Music and uh, you know, it, it just works a lot better. It's hard to say if it's just the changes in Android P, the pixel skin on top of Android that is very light, but does add some new things. I mean, it just seems to be more productive for me. That doesn't mean, of course, that I'm dissing the iPhone 10, which I still like a lot. And the screen is so much better. And there is still blue tint on this guy. 
which is really disappointing. There's a lot that I still like about iOS. What I'm talking about here is the combination of older Android features and the new fluidity that you get with Android P that really seemed to make a huge difference in being able to get around the phone. And it's closer to what I want from a phone than any other Android phone has been to this point. If you watch the channel for a while, you know that I always kind of gravitate back toward iOS after a couple of weeks with an Android phone. But like I say, I mean, I, I put the SIM in this guy yesterday thinking, oh, I'm going back home. And this morning I was ready to put the SIM back in this guy. And I look at this as a good thing. I look at this as the competition is getting stronger. Android is becoming more integrated into my life like iOS had been previously. These are going to be features that Apple can't replicate or hasn't replicated or doesn't look like they'll be able to replicate any time in the near future. So if the Pixel 3 comes out and Google doesn't screw up the hardware and ends up building a great phone as well as a really great operating system, Apple could be in trouble here. There's a moment in time that we're we're at right now. I don't think any, you know, people have been paying attention to hardware for so long that nobody's really realized that we've moved away from the hardware race to the software race. The software race is being run in the arena of the voice assistants and Apple is falling behind. So it's kind of weird to say that, yeah, I've kind of switched to the Pixel 2 XL. I don't know if it's a permanent switch, but it's one that happened and I didn't expect it to. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Talk to me about whether or not you think hardware is still gonna be the differentiating factor in uh, smartphone stuff, or if now we've moved on to software and other features that are gonna make a big difference in what phone takes the lead in the days, weeks, and years to come. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. If you made it to the end of the video, then uh, I, thanks. If you've been here before, then you know how much I love you. You guys are awesome. To sum up, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.